Hello and welcome to this Godot tutorial series, beginner series. This will be the third video that will go through what GD script is. Uh, so it's a programming language specific for Godot. It's similar to Python in case you know what Python is. We'll use it to move this character around our scene and maybe some, do something a little bit more interesting by the end. So first of all, what is GDScript? GDScript is how you code or make programming to your nodes. Every node has a logic tied to it. As you can see here to the right, there are variables, but there's also logic. And how do you define your own custom logic to do what you want in your game? So to do that, you use GDScript. Let's go back to this body scene. I'll save it to make sure nothing goes wrong. I have a head, two legs, two arms, and a torso. Let's say I want to create something to move it around, everything at the same time. So you can, clicking the body, you can come to the right, and you know, as I told you before in the last video, if I change the position, I'll move the entire body around. And this is what I want to change in the script, the position. How do I actually change the position? What is GD script? Let's go through it. If you go and right click it here in the body, you can click attach script or basically also just use this one. We'll do the same. And here you attach a script to that specific node. Uh, you can define what type of language, what type of inheritance, which we'll go through very soon, uh, and some other information that it doesn't matter for now. And just say that I want to create this script. So you can see here, just as I created, this here appeared. I can click here to go back to the script. I was moved to the third tab, to the script tab. I can move back to the 2D scene and use this to go back to that specific script which is attached to body. You can also see that the script extends from no 2D and this is fairly important. Do you remember when I clicked here help and search? I can search for node 2D and click here. You can see that this is the same same text same information talked talk about in our script. No 2D inherits from these things. And if I click here back to body, my script extends, which basically means it also inherits from node 2D. So this is essentially the same. And this also means that everything that I do inside here has access to any information a Node2D has and everything above it. So a Node2D, for example, has a position, right? Here in the ready function, which is called once, uh, you can understand this basically, once you run your code, this executes once and only once. Later, we'll, you'll, we'll see a little bit more about ready and in which cases it executes more than once. If I use print, this is the very basics of programming. Hello world. Hello, no, hello world. Save. Ready will be executed only once. And once I execute it, it will go to this output panel over here. To execute it, I need to actually define what my scene will be because what executes in Godot is a scene and I want to execute this body scene. So since I am already in the body scene, I can just click on this one here or click F6 and I'll run the body scene. You'll see that the body is kind of weird. This is because I only see in my game this rectangle. We can change that in the settings, but for now, this will be enough. You can see here that it matches fairly well, what I am seeing. 
And once I execute it, you can see here below, hello world. I, as I said before, something that I also have inside the script is the position because every node has a position, a transform position. So not position. So position will be my X and Y. I can just put here, control C, control V to copy and paste. I'll save it, F6. And now I'll see here what's the position of my body. I can also change this position. Let's say I want to change the X of my position by 10. I want to move it 10 to the right. If I save it, I can reload it using this button. And you see it moved a little bit to the right. And my print will sh show that the X moved 10 positions to the right. Similar to the ready function, another function that is is available for you to use is a process function which is commented over here. The process function is called every frame and delta is the time between each frame. So how do you actually use this? You can just uncomment it. So you use control K or just delete this. If you print here the position, I just control X to remove this line, Control S to save, and I'll refresh. You'll see it prints every frame. Be very careful on printing every frame because this will make your game much slower. <laughs> so I can F8 or click here in the pause and stop button to stop the scene and make sure it stops printing. And let's say I want now to move the position every frame. F6, and now it moves to the right. One thing also to keep in mind is that you're moving to the right 10 pixels. So this unit here is in pixels. A pixel is the smallest unit you can see. Uh, I'll just execute it again. Here, each little dot, which contains a single, a single color, is a pixel. So I'm moving basically 10 dots to the right every frame. And my frame rate, how many frames I have per second, is fairly big. That's, this is why I'm moving too much. <clears throat> so we use this delta to, to fix these changes that the frame rate may have. For example, if, I, if my computer has one frame per second, for example, and yours computer has 10 frames per second because it's a better computer, the position will change more in your computer than in mine because this function will be executed more times just because the frames per second is different. So we use this delta to fix this this change, this difference between computers. So if we do this, we guarantee that in every computer, I will be moving a specific amount. And now you can see that I'm moving fairly slow because the delta is fairly small. Let's print a delta so you can see here what the delta usually is, F6. So this is a delta, fairly small, right? Oh, it's, if you think this is very small, I can just, Increase this. Oops. And I'll move much faster. Another very special thing about uh, GD script is that just as transform is here to the right, I can expose something from within my script here in the right. Uh, you'll see very soon why this is very cool. If you type in export, and you specify a type, in my case will be a float. Var is how you define a variable, as you can see here in the example. So I have a variable called speed, 
which by default is 10. By default actually is 100. And I can multiply my speed here, which will be 100. But you see here to the right, my speed is 100. Why this is special? If I execute here, it will be the same. Now, if I click here in the body and change this to 200, it will be faster. You can see here it's much faster. But I actually didn't change anything in my original script. So I have what is called a default value. This 100 is the default value for speed, just as the default value for position is 0, 0. And if I click here in this button, this arrow thing, it will revert back to the default. If I click here, it will go back to 100. But now, since I selected this one to be 200, I can have another one with a different value here. So I can have multiple bodies, each body with a different speed. So going back to this little scene that we have, I have three bodies, right? I can select the first body and say it's 50. Second body should be 200 and third body will be five, almost nothing. If I save this scene, control S, I didn't actually save until now. I'll just save it as main for, for lack of a better name. I can click here to, to execute F5 or F6 as we saw until now. I'll just click F6 for now. And you'll see each body is now moving a different speed. So this is how you use the power of GD script with the power of node instancing that we saw in the last video. With this, I was able to specify a different speed for each of my bodies. But not just the speed itself, I can also change much many other things. Let's say, for example, I want to also move my arm and rotate it. Notice this is this is very important because notice that my arm, the center of my arm is this little crosshair here in the middle. So which means that if I change the rotation of it, so selected arm, I come here to transform and I change the rotation, look how it's going to rotate. So do you remember when I said about having parents and child and how the child obeys what the parent is saying? I can add here a child node. I'll add another node to D because I just want another position. I'll just say this is an arm pivot. It's where the arm should actually move. Just move where the arm is. I'll move where to, to specify where the pivot is and the pivot will be here. And I'll put the arm inside. So now if I, if I rotate the arm pivot, look what happens. Magic, isn't it? This is happening because my arm pivot is actually right here in this little crosshair in the middle. And when I rotate it, I'm rotating at this position instead of at the middle of my sprite, which is here. So now that I have an arm pivot, let's tell our script to change this rotation. So let's say I, have, I want to get this arm pivot somehow. To get this value, there are several ways. One of them is get node, and you just put here arm pivot. This is the way. I'm getting the node arm pivot that is inside my body, which is where my script is. So my script is in the body and I'm accessing a child of it. Another way is using this. And there are some other ways which are not very good at the moment. So I'll just use this lower one for now. Dot rotate. And you see, when, when I started typing rotate, I can also type control space to see um, 
examples or recommendations from Godot about what I can type in. So rotation, rotation degrees, and rotate are different things. Rotation is exactly that number. Dot P is a property, which means it's a simple property, as you can see here. When, when I just leave my mouse here and say property rotation degrees. Rotation degrees is over here. And rotate is a function, as you can see here, by F. This rotate is just saying rotate by this amount in radians. If you don't know, radians go from 0 to 2 times pi, which pi equals around 3.6. I don't actually remember now. 6.2? Something like that. But what, what is important is <clears throat> the rotation here will go from 0 to 2.2 2 times pi, which is around 6. If I just put delta here, oops, I'll go back here to, to return and remove this. If I put delta here, it probably will rotate fairly little, but let's see. Well, you see, now it's rotating like clock. Once again, you can create a new speed. I control D to duplicate a line. Arm speed will be 1, and I'll multiply this delta by arm speed. And like this, going back to my main scene, going back to 2D, I can specify what is the arm speed of each one. Let's say this is 1, this one is 0 0.1, and this one is 10. F6. And we'll see each one doing some <laughs> some really funny things, actually. Okay, so in this video, we saw the very basics of GD script. We saw also how to use help to find things. Notice that if you go to help and go to no to D, here you can see all the properties that you have access by being by extending from no to D. We change the position and we use a method called rotate. You can just click here and check what each one do. This will be important in the very near future when we do more complicated things. We also saw how to export things to show here in the inspector. We call this inspector, you can see it in the top. And how to use this for, to have an advantage when we have scenes with instantiated scenes within it. Next video we'll check more on how to use GD script with inputs from our keyboard so that the, our character is actually moving following our keyboard. See you next time.